Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, life strategist and spiritual coach. This is episode 25, Dreams. Can you believe that it's been 25 episodes already? I guess, you know, next time it'll be 50 and then it'll be 100 and then it'll be 1,000 and then awesome. Although hopefully I'm on like national TV by then. So by the way, if you know anybody that's in television, radio, anything like that, I'm looking to go national. Okay, B. Dave Walters, PeaceLoveMoney.com. So, dreams. Like always, I want to start off with a quote. And this is another long one, so I have to read it. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their mind wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes and make them possible. This is by T.E. Lawrence. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. By T.E. Lawrence. Now, to tell you the truth, I have to say, when I first decided to talk about this topic, I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about dreams, like what happens when you sleep and how to make sense of them. Or about, like, goals and stuff. So, believe it or not, I'm going to talk about the, like, sleep dreams first. And then we'll talk about the goal-type dreams if we have time. Now, you may not know this, but I one of the things that I'm actually pretty good at is dream interpretation. So, if you got some dreams that you can't make sense of, find me. Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, B. Dave Walters. And I help you with that. But I'm going to give you some pointers right now to help you figure out what your dreams mean. Because dreams... Are your mind talking to you? And for the most part, dreams fall into four categories. Hopefully I can remember all four. The first one is a message from your subconscious. That it's kind of like, hey, look at this. That's the first kind. The second kind are when you actually are traveling out of your body and maybe experiencing different things. So, like, you may dream about your grandmother because you've actually gone and you're, like, looking at your grandmother. Okay? The third type are the kinds where maybe you're seeing like across time or a past life or something like that. If you believe in past lives, if you don't, it's okay. And the fourth kind are really just dreams. That is just, you know, noise from your brain. It's like replaying episodes of Lost or something, okay? So, when people are asking me about dreams, for the most part, I treat all dreams like they're the first kind. Like it's a message from your mind. It's a message from your mind to you, okay? So, for the most part, a dream means what you think it means, intuitively, right? I can give you a couple of pointers, and I'm about to, but whatever I say, if you ever have me interpret a dream, if anybody ever interprets a dream, and it doesn't quite feel right, then it's not right. Or if you hear something, you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense, then that's what it meant. I'm always kind of skeptical about like dream dictionaries and symbology and stuff, because the problem is... Again, it's a message that's specially crafted for you. So it's going to speak to you in a way that you understand, right? Like for me, I don't know, if Darth Vader shows up in one of my dreams, it means something vastly different to me than it means to most people because I'm a pretty big fan of Darth Vader. So if he shows up in my dream, that's actually going to be a positive thing, even though he was a bad character. Or, again, because of my martial arts background, Quite often, I'm fighting in my dreams. It's very, very common for me to be fighting in dreams. But fighting doesn't have a negative association with me. So if somebody just looks at my dream, they might say, oh, well, you feel, you know, beset on all sides by struggle. But not necessarily. I just like fighting. Okay? So it means something different for me. So you may have to weigh and decipher and determine for yourself what an exact symbol means. But here's a couple of things that pretty much are true across the board, for the most part, unless... It feels wrong, and then this isn't true for you. Death in a dream never means death, especially if it's your own death. If you see your own death in a dream, you probably aren't seeing your death in a dream. They tend to It tends to represent transitions, um, the fact that something is about to change. Something's about to change radically, probably, okay? Now, if you just have an absolute vivid vision of yourself getting run over by a train tomorrow morning, and you look at your watch and you can see 720, then it's 719, watch out for the train, okay? But for the most part, death isn't death, okay? Second thing, for the most part, 
travel, same thing. Travel represents a transition. The fact that you're going on a journey, maybe a physical journey, but probably more of an emotional journey, maybe a career journey, okay? Especially if you're driving in a car. If you're driving, if you're driving the car, if you're driving the boat, if you're driving the airplane, then it's a situation that you have control over and can take control over. If you're not driving, if you're a passenger, then it's something that you either have no control over or at least feel like you have no control over. Okay? Now, I really could talk the rest of the night about dream symbolism, especially after I just got done saying I don't subscribe a lot to dream symbolism, you know, as a thing that just exists for all of us. So, I'm not going to talk too much more about it. But let me just say, start taking your dreams seriously. Really. Really start taking your dreams seriously because a lot of significant information can come to you that way. Okay? And if you don't listen to your own subconscious mind, it's going to be harder for things like your intuition to function, which is what I want to talk about now. All of what I do in a lot of my coaching in these articles and videos that I write, articles for the examiner.com, are designed to kind of help you get in sync with life, to find your own rhythm, to find your own flow, to co-create with God, to realize the universe is on your side. Okay, to realize that everything that happens is happening for your greater good. Once you become aware of the law, that is, and you're directing your thoughts positively. Once you're doing your part, the universe will do its part because the universe is doing its part now. If you're attracting messed up things, it's because you got messed up thoughts and feelings. I'm sorry. I love you. It's true. And just because you switch to a positive thought and switch to positive feelings today doesn't mean that it's going to offset 30, 40 years of negativity like that. It will offset it, but it may not happen instantly. In fact, things may even get worse before they get better. But you have to remain resolute as long as you know that you're focused with the proper feeling and proper emotion that things are going to get better. Okay? So, part of being part in partnership with the universe, part of being, you know, of loving yourself and feeling happy is starting to trust yourself. And part of trusting yourself is to trust your dreams and take your dreams seriously. Now, if you think you don't dream, you do. Okay, You do. You may not remember them. And if you really want to work hard at this, the best way to do it is to keep like a pen and paper next to your bed. So that as soon as you wake up, you can just write down whatever you remember real fast. Okay? And that will start, one, building the muscle of how to remember, but you're also sending a message to you yourself, to your own subconscious mind, that it's being taken seriously. And once it starts to feel like it's being taken seriously, it will start to work harder to help you. Because right now, if you've got problems, if you've got habits that you can't change, if you've got limiting beliefs like we talked about last time, if you want to change your self-image, you're kind of at odds with your subconscious mind right now. Okay? And let me tell you something. Your subconscious is going to win. Your subconscious will win 10 out of 10 times. Okay? That's why it's hard to change because... Your conscious mind only knows how to exert willpower. It's got no feelings, and it's got no memory. It only knows how to make choices and direct things and process information, okay? And it doesn't always filter it correctly. This is why anytime you're trying to make a change that's willpower-based, that you're like, I'm going to stop smoking today. I'm going to only eat salads today. It won't last because the bigger part of you, your subconscious is like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Which is why it takes 21 days to form a habit, sometimes more. Now, like always, I'm going to split this for my brothers and sisters on YouTube. Everybody else, stay with me. Hang on.